one. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How's it going? And welcome to the Just Chatting Gaming News and Trailers for the week of February 25th. We got a handful of uh, quick stories and a bunch of trailers, including a brand new trailer for Diablo 4. We got some launch trailers and some other fun stuff. Let's go ahead and kick this off with a basically what's a new MMO announcement. So there's a new MMO coming out called Throne and Liberty. If you're curious as to what the game actually is, hop on YouTube and check out some videos. But it was announced that Amazon Games and NCSoft uh, basically announced that it's going to be Amazon who's going to be publishing the game for the West and Japan. And the West does include the uh, Europe region. But this is a game that I had not heard of and I went online and... Look at some videos, and uh, it looks okay from what I can see so far. But, yeah, we'll have to get a lot more detail once it actually gets closer to launch and see if it's going to be any good or not. And is it free to play or sub or, you know, all the all the fun uh, MMO details. But Amazon's actually been doing pretty good with their, uh, with their games as of late. So I guess we'll see uh, how that one turns out. Uh, next up, we have a little bit of a surprise announcement. There was a, basically like an industry call at Warner Brothers. And uh, in that financial call, they kind of accidentally leaked that Mortal Kombat 12 was coming out this year. And as I'm sure most of you know, in this day and age, especially with big games... You know, they release trailers, there's big unveils at like E3 or Summer Game Fest or something like that. But no, like the CEO, like during the call, he's just like, oh yeah, no, Mortal Kombat 12 is uh, going to come out this year. So that'd be good for us. And uh, Ed Boon, who's like Mr. Mortal Kombat, he just went to Twitter and he was just like, oh my God, what are these guys doing? So that was interesting. So, yeah, we'll have to see when this actually gets announced. Uh, it could be Summer Game Fest. Uh, NetherRealm does have a track record with Jeff Keighley, so I bet you, uh, with, with my money down on the table, I, I would assume that we see it there. So, speaking of video games making money, and we were actually just talking about... Uh, Elden Ring and Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, I believe it was yesterday was the one-year anniversary of Elden Ring. And it's winning all these awards. And they announced that Elden Ring has sold 20 million copies in that one year's time. Now, what's really crazy about that is, you know, from this, this is a massive, massive big game from From Software... But the funny thing is, when it comes to Hogwarts Legacy, we kept hearing like, man, this game, the pre-sales are just absolutely insane for Hogwarts Legacy. But we were kind of waiting to see what those numbers were actually going to be. And come to find out, Hogwarts Legacy has sold 12 million in two weeks. Now, some, uh, some number crunchers have actually gone back. And that is actually faster than Elden Ring. So Elden Ring did not sell 12 million in the first two weeks. So Hogwarts Legacy at the moment is outselling Elden Ring, which is just crazy. Absolutely crazy. Big numbers. And uh, I can't remember if we really talked about this last week or not, but... The developers of, of Hogwarts have announced that they have no plans for expansions or major DLCs or nothing. Uh, it sounds like they will be making more Hogwarts games. So they'll probably continue the story here. Put out, you know, two, th two three games. But yeah, the fact that they're not going to do like any big paid DLC or, or anything for this, that's pretty shocking considering what the sales numbers are. So switching over to a uh, couple quick E3 stories. You know, E3 has been a very uh, interesting topic over the last couple years. Jeff Keighley's basically come in and taken things over with the Game Awards and Summer Game Fest and Opening Night Live and everything that he does. 
And so E3 is going to try and get things going again this year. And so Ubisoft announced that they will be at E3, but Nintendo, Microsoft, Sony, and many others will not be there. So without the big names, I I don't know what that show is going to look like. So, yeah, we'll have to see. Pretty Pretty crazy stuff. All right, let's go ahead and jump over to trailers. Since there's a million games coming out, we're going to check out some of the launch trailers. The first one is the launch trailer for Wolong Fallen Dynasty, and this is this is coming out for, like, all systems. So let's take a look. It's also going to be on Game Pass. From Team Ninja, creators of Neo. Another one of these third-person action-adventure style games. The third. Coming out real soon. All right. Next up, we have the launch trailer for Octopath Traveler 2. Let's take a look. I want to change that. I want Ku to be a home for all, regardless of birth. A place where we look out for each other. In order to realize that, I would suffer any loss. Thank you, everyone. The fun is just getting started. Now, watch me shine. I plan to do all I can to share the wealth and help make the world. A so apparently, place. with this game, That's you do not have to play the first one. Means to me. It is not your life. All I right, want. Matt Mercer. It's Harvey's. Enough. Where is he? I've made up my mind. I will kill you and leave the Black Snakes. I will finally be free. I understand that your faith is shaken. But I ask you, do you not wish to know the truth? I love Totohaha and the people who call it home. And that's why I want to protect it. And that means... I'm going to fight! It is our mission as apothecaries to ensure that everyone lives long enough for their hopes to become reality, even if it costs us our own lives. Now go forward, Pride of the Sands. There is none worthy to be my foe. None! I found it at last. The seventh source. Harvey, you bastard! What do you fight for? It wasn't the only thing that mattered to you. I believe there's something out there more valuable than Will. I wish I had a lifetime to report on your shenanigans. I came here to kill you. I raised you as if you were truly my own. Silence, you abominable reptile! You're leaving again, aren't you? I simply wish to bring the truth to light. Prepare yourselves for a show. Dreams aren't good for nothing. You have a habit of putting others above yourself, don't you? I will extend a helping hand to all in need. The stars, they're all gone. Something's coming. I smell a quarry unlike any other. It's here. I must find an answer to this conundrum. The food will spoil if we stand around like a bunch of frightened deer. We can do anything we set our minds to. Well, it's plain what we've got to do. Keep moving forward, right? Let us walk together a while longer, friends. If I pause this here for just a second, uh, this game actually is getting incredible reviews. I know some people who are already playing it, and they just absolutely love it. Uh, 
these two games have a very unique pixel art style that apparently people just love. But yeah, apparently this one is not really connected to the first game. I, I think they're kind of doing like a Final Fantasy with it so to where the Final Fantasy games don't necessarily connect. And it's also fully voice acted. Normally these JRPG games like this are not voice acted, but this one is. I think I'll stick around for a little more fun. Somewhere, someone cries out for aid. Let's I might get try it. With it, shall we? What does it mean to play a role in a vast world of adventure? The places you go, the deeds you do, the tales whose hero you become. Every road is yours to take. Octopath Traveler 2, February 24th, 2023. Embark on an adventure all your own. Demo now available. Dun dun dun. dun. Jalen in chat says there's three games. What's the third one? All right, next up we have the launch trailer for Blood Bowl 3, a game that's getting terrible reviews. Let's take a look. Yeah, for anybody who's interested in that, I would give them six months to fix it. And then it'll probably be good. Jalen says Triangle Strategy. I had no idea that that was in the same universe or even by the same devs. Hmm. All right. We have another trailer for Redfall. This is the World of Redfall official trailer. Something wicked dark is coming. They took over the hospital almost immediately. Like they planned it. You sent people to Avum. Folks out there are dead because of what you did. They took my child. The sun. Is it only covered up here? Or is it dark everywhere else too? You know what happened at the shelter. You think that can't happen here? This is a game that I definitely want to co-op if I can. Is this our time? Pathetic. You'll come to me in time. They all Real question is, what looks better, this or Suicide Squad? Oh, shit. No. The whole world is changing, starting with Redfall. Coast Guard Station got taken over pretty quick. Everyone scattered. We gotta get out there, grab some supplies, and help people get through this mess. Everybody knows it's over. Everybody except you. This 
seem to be warring factions. Second. Pre-order and get a bunch of stuff. Or buy other editions. Alright, two trailers left, including the big Diablo trailer. Next up, we have another free expansion for No Man's Sky. They do this like once every three or four months, and every time it's free, and... Just adds like a thousand new things to this game, making it better and better. It's crazy. Welcome to the Fractal Update. A complete revamp for VR, as well as new experiences and new gameplay for all travelers. The Utopia Speeder allows travelers to skim across planet surfaces at high velocity. A brand new expedition challenges players to work together and rebuild an abandoned solar system, unlock unique customization options, and a brand new robotic companion. Record your greatest discoveries in the new Waters catalog. The Fractal Update allows players to explore the universe with a new they have shields now, huh? I had no More idea. will follow. One of these days, they have to announce that they're slowing production on that game. I, I wonder when. All right. This is the Inside the Game, the World of Sanctuary Diablo 4. Sanctuary is the world in which the story of Diablo takes place, and it's the battleground for the souls of humanity and the fight between angels and demons. Sanctuary is a vast world, and there'll always be something new in every area, like hordes of enemies, safe haven towns, resources to gather, events, quests, and more. We wanted to bring Diablo 4 artistically more back towards like Diablo 2, the much darker style. It's very macabre. The artists and designers have had so much fun working on it, and it's just been a joy to create for us. How would the people of Sanctuary show their world? What kinds of art would they use to describe the world? One of the things we really wanted to do was make the game feel like a painting. Everything was built by a wonderful group of people who love mm. Diablo as much as you do. I mean, Diablo 3 doesn't look we bad. Have five unique just fine. zones. Each of the regions has its own kind of flavor and ambient life. We take a lot of influence from what our concept artists give us, and I know they take a lot of influence from real life. There's Kedjistan, which is the sort of desert. It's amazing with its sweeping sand dunes. Skaz Glen, which is inspired by Scotland. Fractured Peaks is inspired by the Carpathian Mountains. The Dry Steps is sort of our mountainous desert region, and Hauzar is the swampy region of the south. Whether you're on a mount or on foot, it's a joy to go from one region to the next. Also, the region transitions are really beautiful and stunning to see. Making sure that it felt sort of geologically true was really important. If you walk from Fracture Peaks into Hauzar, you'll cross all of these waterfalls caused by snow melt. So you can actually see the snow melting in Fractured Peaks through waterfalls entering into Hauzar and entering the large basin that fills Hauzar with all of the swamp water. We have all the different environments mm. in the overworld, and we tried to make sure there was some parity with those in the dungeons. We have dungeons that are flooded, and there's like moss everywhere. It very much fits in with that Clan environment. Kedjistan is all desert, so we have dungeons filled with sand. All the dungeons are particularly placed to make sure that they feel like this is a thing that could be in this part of the world. It fits here, it belongs here. We definitely redesigned some of the monsters. For example, the Fallen family has gone through a major redesign to make them feel more grim, a little scarier, a little darker, to match the tone of Diablo 4. Monster families are a way to describe the group of monsters that create a combat experience. So a lot of times they'll be brutes and swarmers, melee or casters, and that's the term that we use to sum up the vampires or the drowned or the undead. 
and all of them have unique abilities, but they all synchronize together. They bolster each other and improve how they work on the battlefield so that every time you fight a pack of, let's say, goat men, it's always different. We wanted to make sure that the monster families all felt like they fit in their environments, and so our creature team did a really good job of making these different versions of them that have adapted to their environment. There's snowy goatmen and fractured peaks. And some I do of the feel like they slowed down the combat for this version. More arid areas. How is our has a lot of poison spiders? Each of the regions has its own kind of flavor, and it's pretty exciting to discover. We have some really cool new snake men, the Nangari. We've seen snake men in Diablo before, but these guys are just really twisted amalgamations of multiple snake heads, even human body parts. We have skeletons, we have undead, we have ghosts all the things you would expect to find from a Diablo game. Spiders have been around in Diablo forever, but the spider host was a cool new twist. It's a giant spider that attaches to a corpse and then puppets it at you, and when you kill it, it explodes with tons of baby spiders, and then those little spiders come after you, and I feel slightly guilty about traumatizing a lot of people with it. We also have wildlife, deer, snakes, bugs, dogs. You can pet the dogs, by the way. So many people ask to pet the dog. Work, work. It's actually a, a lot of hard work to figure out how to pet that dang dog. Can't be that hard, it's just an animation. You have so many activities that you might run into. It could be a stronghold, it could be side quests. You might have key dungeons to do. There could be bounties to pick up. You might encounter a world boss. You might encounter an invasion event of some kind. We have much longer, sort of narrative heavy side quests and we have some shorter side quests. So you never feel like you're always doing the same thing. The pacing is always a little bit different. One of the things that I really loved about our announcement was the by three they come cinematic. I was able to build a quest where you actually get to go to those places. You That's get cool. to go to the town. You get to go inside the chapel. And I work with some incredible dungeon designers to build the dungeon from the cinematic. You're going to get to go across. Yeah, the game has like, what, 150 dungeons or something like room that? Where Lilith was summoned. There's a lot. I don't want to spoil too much, but I'm super excited to have players see it. Sometimes it's kind of nice to just walk places because that's a lot of the times when you see these little events. You might find a demonic altar that you need to feed your blood to, to summon demons to then defeat for all of their loot. You might find a ghost child who's trying to find the remains of their parents and you have to protect them. We have strongholds, which are a sort of large area that you can enter. Man, and I hope this is good. It's its own story, its own setup, Please its be own good. Sort of art that sort of tells a very specific story about this location. And those stay unlocked permanently once you've beaten back the darkness. We did a lot of figuring out the balance between like how much space do we need for players to play through these dungeons versus how much space do we need to make them look cool. My favorite is this one called Endless Gates. It's got these teleporters, and these teleporters actually take you to other dungeons, so you'll end up in a cave, a crypt, or one of the ancients. And every time you go in, it's designed to change. And there's dozens of villages and towns that you will run into. The cities and towns are designed to be hubs. They're, they're havens. They're places where you can find other players. They're good places to do all of your usual inventory management. Each region has its main city that you can get lots of side quests and lots of activities. We've really crafted the world to feel like there's always something just around the corner to find. In Diablo 4, you actually get to walk Sanctuary. It's a massive place that you can seamlessly explore with no loading in between zones, which is something brand new. It's a very immersive experience. What I love about it is that you can go in a direction and you might be searching for a particular quest or an item, and you'll come across a stronghold that you haven't explored before. You'll come across dungeons that have I mean, it, like a lone double agent a said in chat, this is basically an MMO. It really is. It fills in some is. bit of lore that you actually were interested in. There's any number of things that can happen along the road to your destination, and that's what I love about having this fast space. There are tons of different types of events in the world. It's been created to feel full of things to encounter, full of secrets to discover, full of characters to interact with, of stories to find. We have these altars to Lilith that if you can find them, they will give you a permanent buff to all of your characters across the game. There are tons of them hidden everywhere. We also have these massive world bosses that are so big the camera actually has to pull out even further. And you're gonna have an opportunity to fight these bosses with your friends or with strangers to take down these huge world bosses. And the team has done just an incredible job making Sanctuary a world worth exploring and a world worth investing yourself in. Yeah, thing is, Diablo 4 is coming out first, so we'll see. Yeah, that game looks, uh, if I go ahead and just pause here for a second. Oop. No, it, it looks great.
like visually it looks great. Uh, like I said, I, I, I feel like the gameplay looks just a little bit slower than Diablo 3. But it's also one of those things where once you get in and start playing it, maybe it's, you know, it feels better. PoE is generally very fast. But yeah, like I said, I hope uh, I hope this game is good. Uh, I will say this, though, and for those who are not aware, if there's anybody in, in chat or on YouTube who's considering, like, taking the launch day off, or I, I think they're doing, like, an early access period as well based on, like, the edition you buy, I can guarantee you that Blizzard will have their servers DDoSed. It happens every time with every major Blizzard release. They have major server problems. So fully expect you not being able to log into this game for potentially a couple days. I mean, maybe they've got their security in a better place, but somehow I doubt it. I mean, the last WoW expansion had problems for, for days from what I remember. So just uh, an FYI on that. But with that, for those who are watching on YouTube, uh, that'll go ahead and do it for the video. So thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.